All right, folks, we're going to get started. Um, we're going to be talking about testing and release patterns on cross-plane, and um, this is something that we've been working on a lot with our clients and other cross-plane users, so we hope we find it really useful. Uh, quick introduction. Um, I'm Stephen Burley. I'm a principal solutions architect for Upbound. I've been with Upbound for about three years now. Hey guys, thanks all for joining. I'm Yuri, I'm also a solutions architect. We are on the same team with Steven and we are helping outbound customers with course plane adoption. Thanks a lot for joining us today. Yes. All right. Now cross plane is a very big project and has a lot of moving parts and we're talking about testing today so we can't really go over an overview of cross plane. So I'll just try to do in a couple of slides what cross plane is um, and some of the core concepts that we're gonna cover today. So the first thing is that cross-plane has this idea, if you remember Kubernetes has CRDs, you know, these are custom resource definitions and Kubernetes is implemented with controllers that continually reconcile things. Um, so the idea of cross-plane is what if we could take this model to manage anything, right? Manage anything in the cloud, cloud resources. And so cross-plane is an extension of Kubernetes and um, basically it allows you to manage anything, AWS, Google, uh, GitHub, um, so we're finding it um, an extremely powerful tool for a lot of teams that are building these internal platforms, right, that need to manage for hundreds of teams, thousands of resources. Um, we like to think about cross-plane as a universal control plane. And this is the idea that you have one tool that can manage everything. Um, and the parts of that, the universal control plane, are first the interfaces. We depend on the Kubernetes API. So anything that could talk to the Kubernetes API or manage the Kubernetes API, tools like Caverno or OPA, um, work seamlessly with cross-plane. Um, the next thing is API abstractions. If you're familiar with Kubernetes, you know we abstract things like ingress controllers, pods. Um, what cross-plane does is it abstracts out um, other resources, for example, like an S3 bucket is a Kubernetes resource, a native resource. And then there's also this concept of platform APIs. So you as a platform engineer can define like a cluster, my company cluster, and apply it to the Kubernetes infrastructure and then your developer could come in and ask for it. And they're just gonna do kubectl apply cluster and they'll get a cluster that Crossplane will provision for you. So the way this model works is that Crossplane, and we'll talk about the next, is that Crossplane interacts, it has a series of providers that interacts with the backend cloud providers. So your API is a Kubernetes API, um, and in the backend, we have a series of controllers that can manage almost any cloud object. So what we're gonna talk about today is just a few concepts, because this is what's gonna be evolved during our testing. Um, Crossplane is a very modular framework, like everything else in Kubernetes, there's a lot of separation of control, so it's a very well-architected framework. Um, so the first one is how do we, we have the core cross-plane engine and then we have a series of extensions that allow cross-plane to have extreme flexibility. The first one is providers. So what a provider does is that allows you to manage an external API object. So we have providers, there's dozens of providers, but we'll talk about things like AWS, Azure. When you install a provider, it comes with all the CRD types, uh, bucket, EKS, RDS instance, right? It will come with those, so when you install a provider, you'll get dozens or hundreds of CRDs one for every Kubernetes object, and then you'll get a controller, right? The controller will come, so when the user does kubectl apply, the controller will see that, talk to the AWS API server, um, and provision it. So that's the first concept. The second concept is compositions, right? So you, you provision in a cluster, and uh, when you provision that, it's complex, right? Like you could think there's dozens of resources. There's IAM roles, there's network settings, there's security policies. Um, and for your users, you don't want to expose all that. Uh, it's an implementation detail. So that's what composition does. Uh, composition is basically a recipe where you say, um, I take this input and I'm going to provision all these resources for you, right? Um, and then finally, how do we do that? How do we create all these resources? So Crossplane is actually really cool about this. Um, you could do it in any program language you want. We use something called functions. Um, and uh, we have a series of functions. I showed one here, KCL, Q, Python, Go templating. So you could write these templates in any language and it's like GitHub Actions, right? So what happens is when you define a composition, you have a step and it could be Go template and the Go template creates all the YAML manifests, right? EKS, cluster, bucket, everything, and then passes it on to the next step. So you could have things mutating the state as you go and at the end, the cross plane applies that and all the providers go and provision it. Um, so we're going to talk about KCL a little bit today and Go templating, right? Because KCL is actually very exciting for us. Um, we're using it quite a bit, and it makes it an incredibly powerful framework for provisioning infrastructure. 
So let's get to the things we want to test, right? Because th there's a lot more concepts in cross-plane, but these are just the ones we're going to talk about today. The first one is we want to make sure when we create objects like an S3 bucket that it's actually good against the schema, right? Like we don't like if we want to make sure that if the field is object encryption is a Boolean, we don't want to put like a three into it, right? We want that to error out. The second thing in our composition, we want to make sure that when we create infrastructure, it's the infrastructure that we want, that it's secure, that we're not opening up ports to the internet, right? So we need to test that, the outputs. And then finally, in our functions, we have to make sure that our functions are correct syntax and correct logic, right? So these are the things that we're going to talk about testing today. All right, and just, I put this slide in here. This is, um, we're going to focus a little bit more on early stage testing here, and then Yuri will get to end-to-end -end testing. But really, our goal is to try to catch errors as soon as possible, because there's orders of magnitude. It, you know, this is a study that IBM did in 2010. Um, it's literally, you know, two orders of magnitude to fix things in production, especially with cloud infrastructure like we deal with. Um, you have the risk of, you know, deleting things or making them misconfigured or having a lot of cleanup at the end. So um, we really want to catch errors as soon as possible. All right. So what we're going to talk about today is before, so Crossplane runs in the cluster, it's continually provisioning hundreds, thousands of resources. But what we're going to talk about here is before we ever get to that, you're a platform engineer, you're developing all this infrastructure, and you want to test it locally, right? You want to say in my command line, before I'm spending thousands of dollars on a, a cloud for resources, I want to try working on it locally. So Crossplane has a command where we could render functions. So this is a little bit how Crossplane works. Um, Again, this is, there's a lot of stuff in Crossplane, but basically what happens is when a user puts in a request, it runs through that function pipeline of the steps, right? And each step like just generates or mutates the YAML structure, and then it comes out into a composite resource, right? So this would be like an EKS cluster, and you'd have EKS node group that you would have a cluster auth that generates a kube config, you have, you know, node pools or whatever else. That's what's going to come out, and those will get provisioned. Um, so what we could do in Crossplane is we have a CLI where you could just render this, and it can just generate all the resources coming out. Um, and I'll do a demo of this, a really quick demo of this afterwards. Um, so um, functions in general, uh, Crossplane 117 is coming out next week. Um, it has a bunch of new features, but we're actually, just so you know, that, so you don't break your scripts, um, all the function infrastructure is graduating from beta to a v1. Right, just to, to let you know, so any examples here, we see cross-plane beta render. If you get cross-plane next week in the CLI, um, you won't need the beta moniker anymore in the rest. It's just, um, and again, um, what we're gonna put to the command line is when we say render, the XR is what the user asks for, right? So you can imagine uh, a developer team wants an RDS instance, right? So they're gonna have a YAML that says create an RDS instance for me. The composition is your logic, and then functions is just all the Docker images of the functions you're going to run. The way functions run is they're almost like lambdas on a cluster. Um, they take the input, they mutate it, and send it back. Um, it's actually a very cool way of running, but each function is basically a cross-plane pod um, that takes a gRPC standardized input and sends out gRPC standardized output, which is really good because it allows us to have a great function ecosystem because it's very easy to write a new language bond binding for a cross-plane function. All right. One other thing, when you create clusters, the real world is very complex. Um, this is a lot of data we have. The most important things is like in a real cluster, you have hundreds of objects and they all have state. Um, so what we want to do is be able to mock those things, right? We want to say like, what's the IP address of this VPC? Um, what's the password for the RDS instance and things like that? Um, there's other ways we could do, um, when you're doing cross-plane, you could actually with extra resources, you could look up any other object on the cluster. Um, and then you could use things like environment configs to have shared configs across the cluster, you know, VPC IDs or ARNs, right? So there's lots of extra data that comes in. So we could just, with cross-plane render, we could actually send these things in. So I'll demo this in a second. Um, and that's basically it. So this is part of how we could start rendering to make our local development environment, when we're rendering it, look as much as possible as like a real cloud environment so we could check our logic. All right. So this is what it's going to look like in our scripts. And then there's one other thing is now that we're rendering and we have our um, rendering that looks very close to the real world, we want to validate it. Um, and we have some tooling for that. And then basically, again, it's a command line that you could pump, pipe any YAML to it. Um, but it's a validate command, right? So what you do is you provide it a directory of schemas of any kinds. And if you know cross-plane schemas, CRDs, they have open API definitions and they also have CEL definitions. 
right? Um, so validate will actually validate your output against that. So we use this in our CI pipelines. We render and then we validate. So even before um, anybody tries to provision these, our CI systems are checking these to make sure that the manifests that we're generating, the cloud resources are all valid. All right. Um, I have demos. We have code and demos for this, so you can go follow it along. Um, I'm just going to go just do a really quick demo here, and then we'll get. Um, so, um, just to show you what a composition looks like, this is what a cross-plane composition looks like. Um, and you can see here, this is using something called Go Templating. So we're just going to range through an input parameter the user creates, and this is just going to create um, three Kubernetes namespaces here with a Kubernetes object. That's all it does. So if we render this, you can see here we've created the three Kubernetes objects. Um, and you can see here the status is all empty, right? There's no status. This is a basic rendering. We don't know. We're just, but this is immediately, you could tell that what this resource is going to create. I'm going to show one more example. Um, let's go to. This actually includes um, composition environment, external environment. So when we render this, um, you could see here it's going to come back with um, all the resources that it pulled in for the extra data, right? Like it could pull in resources from across the cross plane cluster and look at them dynamically. And the other thing, too, is if you look at the status, um, now it has all the UIDs of the namespaces, right? So you can imagine this if you're mocking a real cluster data, you could bring in the real, you could bring in the real uh, values that like AWS is bringing back. And then finally, I'll go to validate. Um, and what validate does is it's basically going to go and um, I basically, in my schema directory, I just have a configuration package for Crossplane. And a Crossplane configuration package contains all the dependencies, providers, and CRDs, and everything. Um, validate will automatically download that and then take the output from our composition and um, validate it against the CRD. So any errors here will actually. Um, report. So um, that's basically, um, you know, using local rendering. So now we're going to talk about some other test cases. So I'll hand it off to Yuri. Thank you so much, Stephen. Great job. Uh, so let's talk about uh, more testing patterns. So. One thing we are trying to experiment with is uh, uh, unit testing with KCL. But first, before we proceed with that part, uh, a little bit of intro uh, about KCL and how it got into uh, cross-plane domain into uh, our, uh, uh, our cross-plane world in general. So we got an amazing contribution, very impressive contribution of function KCL that is coming from China. So huge uh, shout out to uh, KCL maintainers. And uh, basically, it enabled us to implement the cross-plane composition with the power of KCL. And KCL provided a very nice balance for us between a static kind of patch and transform original one representation and uh, uh, ability to inject a powerful logic where we need. So it uh, impressed us immediately. So we have a nice blog post uh, around KCL. One is uh, on a blog cross plane AO. It's uh, uh, written by PFI, by creator of function KCL. Hey, PFI, if you watch the recording, thank you so much. And second one is uh, our experience from outbound. Uh, in this blog post, I'm showcasing uh, KCL uh, integration in one of our reference configuration of AWS EKS. Uh, but this talk is not about KCL building, so let's focus on uh, more like testing stuff. <clears throat> One thing that we, uh, so we already started to implement some uh, KCL based composition in our subset of customers, and they already start to get a, uh, uh, some experience and KCL uh, exper experimentation on their side. And what we found out, like it's pretty straightforward thing, but there is a KCL play playground, right, where you can run the, some KCL code and figure out how the YAML stream is going to be uh, produced out of KCL logic <clears throat> and, uh, and share it. So it's kind of happened organically that one of our customers 
uh, was implementing some composition with a KCL. I hit some bug, shared the KCL playground with me. I found an issue and shared it back. And it was super productive. Uh, so it's even before you implement any cross-playing code. And that's, you know, it's pretty straightforward. That I think like it's worth sharing uh, that you can have this possibility to get uh, like a fastest feedback possible, right, even before committing any code. And now to the specific unit testing with KCL. So we tried to obviously think like how we can use a KCL for uh, fast feedback loop, automating the uh, unit testing style, creating some form of framework. Uh, first attempt and the most straightforward thing to try out was uh, kind of create a unit test uh, against the K files, KCL files. But we quickly figured out that in this case, we are losing all the mocking and ca capabilities that Steven just uh, showed to us, right? All the mocking external resources uh, and observed resources and all that stuff. And re-implementing re that in KCL seems suboptimal. So that's why we decided to actually unit test the render state. So we are, we are going to use a standard cross-plane render mechanism, uh, uh, produce the YAML stream, and write some KCL-based test out of it. And basically, with that, you can achieve pretty, uh, pretty nice, lightweight, uh, test-driven development-like workflow. And I have a pull request, all open source, where we have a, like a small uh, demonstration of it. And uh, I can show it right away, like how it looks like in a real, a real configuration of ours. So here, uh, we have a configuration, lightweight uh, configuration Azure network under test, right? So it's pretty. Um, straightforward composition. It actually uses uh, the original patch and transfer mechanism because we don't have any kind of advanced logic there. Uh, so we can test, uh, with KCL unit testing, we can actually test a standard composition pipeline. So it can be any kind of code, not only KCL, but patch and transfer, go templating, and anything, any additional functions like a helper function sequencer. So, and we're going to uh, test this uh, X network. So it's actually uh, our custom API. Uh, and the task is to basically test it locally uh, with our unit test suite. What we're going to do is we will use the standard uh, rendering mechanism, right? And we are going to run some KCL-based test suite. So first thing first is just a render, a very similar stuff what uh, Steven just showed to us, but uh, we use this specific composition as an example. And uh, then we are going to run a render test. So it will put the uh, render uh, YAML uh, into the cache and will execute the te some tests, KCL-based tests. So what, is, uh, what these tests actually are? We have this minimalistic test suite. And uh, we have a, like a single helper function there that is basically retrieving the object from a YAML, um, multi-document uh, uh, YAML stream, uh, a specific object, and it is using composition resource name as an ID. And for composition, uh, if you're familiar with cross-plane, you know that it is unique per composition, and basically it's a good entry point to retrieve um, uh, unique objects. So we are retrieving them and basically building simple assertions. So uh, pretty lightweight, very straightforward, and to, with that you can build a TDD test-driven development-like workflow for infrastructure with cross-plane. So let's actually execute that in, a, in this small live demo. And what I'm going to do is, uh, is write a test first. So like if you're familiar with TDD, you're first writing the test, right? Test fails, then we're writing implementation code. So actually in our case, it's a composition code. And then we, this implementation uh, useful code is making the test green. So it's standard uh, red, green refactor, or like a, a fail pass refactor TDD flow. Uh, and let's try to execute that. So I'm going to write a new test, right? For storage, I want to uh, add the new uh, service endpoint. And basically, I'm working around this code. Uh, I'll open just in a parallel pane. So it's a subnet. And here we go. Currently, we have only service SQL. And we are writing new tests that we want also a Microsoft storage endpoint. We are running the test. It should fail, right? So we have a failed test, test first. 
amazing. Now we can write an implementation code, which is now okay, it will be super trivial. We just uh, adding the endpoint uh, for a subnet of a uh, new type, Microsoft Storage, and we're running the test again. And our test suite is green, so we achieved this standard TDD-like flow, uh, which is pretty fast feedback loop, everything automated, and you can achieve this naturally growing regression test with uh, following the similar approach. So, this is pretty uh, good uh, local uh, automated uh, feedback. Uh, now we can get to more expensive layer of end-to-end -end testing. So, uh, overall role of end-to-end -end testing in our cross-plane story, right? So, local feedback is great, validation, rendering, unit testing, it, it's uh, super valuable. But at the, at the end of the day, before the release and packaging, you need to check that this stuff produces the real resources in the cloud provider side, right? So, effectively, you need to uh, apply XRD in composition, custom resource definitions, ideally package them because eventually you deal with a configuration package uh, of cross-plane, uh, then you apply the claim or composite resource under test, and then you need to evaluate the behavior, like is it sync, is it ready, is it eventually uh, the less itself cleanly. So uh, all that things, uh, very end-to-end, -end, it is required that we validate them at the end of the pipeline, let's say. And uh, yeah, we want to automate all this manual step. We again want to uh, organically grow in regression to test suite, but already on an end-to-end -end test level. And while, while achieving so, we will have a, a good enough confidence before the cross-plane configuration release. So that's uh, what motivated us uh, to create an app test. It's, uh, I'm trying to reason about it as a low code and to end testing framework, meaning like you're not writing uh, actual test code, you're just collecting the set of examples uh, under test. And we originally used it uh, for, uh, to support cr development of cross-plane providers. Uh, eventually we uh, reused it for cross-plane configurations development as well. Uh, it uh, enabled us uh, covering thousands of MRs uh, in official providers during our test. Meanwhile, like, you know, uh, enough development of velocity. So we were not writing much test code. We were keeping the examples, right? And Uptest was testing it for us. Uh, last but not least, it's uh, contributed to CNCF. Uh, so it's vendor neutral, you, and you are free to use it. So it's open source and also part of uh, CNCF organization. So. Uh, effectively, how it works, why it's actually low code, right? It's because it uses well known cattle uh, uh, framework underneath, but it generates a test suite for you. So it takes an example, manifest as an input, and the testing code is actually generated somewhere in the background. You never touch it. And you, you're just collecting some examples in, a, in your repository, right? In, a, in, case our, in case of our configuration Azure network, if you're just using like one te test example because it's enough for, uh, to test that specific uh, abstractions, abstraction end to end. So, Testing steps are pretty straightforward. It's like CRUD-like flow, right? It supplies a manifest, uh, it checks that uh, everything is good, everything, uh, every composite resource is ready, all good. Then it updates. Uh, the manifest also checks that everything is fine. Then it, it mimics the import, like, you know, kind of import of all the resources on a totally clean con uh, control plane, that uh, all the external names are fine, so everything is healthy, and then, uh, it makes a clean deletion, right? So that's also a very important part because w whenever you want to delete the claim or uh, composite resource uh, with cross-plane, it's very important that all the resources are gone and uh, we achieve the clean deletion and nothing is blocked. Uh, if you want to deviate a little bit from a standard CRUD-like flow, there are a set of hooks and helper functions, so it's also available. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's useful to create some workarounds in your uh, uptest-based test suite. Uh, additional thing, we have a reusable GitHub workflow uh, that you can uh, put into your GitHub Actions. If you're not using GitHub Actions, it's pretty straightforward. You can reuse it in any kind of CI. But basically, uh, it enables us to run up test based pipelines in a centralized manner. So that's our standard flow. We never merge stuff before we get a centralized feedback from a, uh, updates based pipeline and have, we have a special comment, right? So test examples on the optional one and the large repositories we can specify which example to test and uh, updates provide the feedback and then we merge. So let's get to the demo. So end to end demo uh, of uh, the stuff I just described. So 
First thing first, uh, we have this end-to-end -end, uh, target, right? So it uh, uh, has an uptest invocation uh, line and also all the additional uh, steps like uh, uh, building, packaging, and uh, installing the local control plane. And I also ex expo export a single, uh, single environment variable to uh, uh, to populate with Azure credentials, Corel credentials. And now, now I can just execute make end to end, and it will do the magic. So first, it uh, packages a configuration under test. So basically, you can end to end test even before commit. So it will pick up the local uh, state of uh, repository package into XPKG, uh, so it's cross-plane OSA compatible package, right? Uh, creates the local kind cluster, uh, installs the cross-plane there, so currently it installs the uh, cross-plane and uh, eventually all the dependencies. And now it does with this dev side car uh, trick. It's very uh, interesting uh, workaround, uh, so, uh, we basically packaging this X package, and uh, in a standard kind of production-like flow, you need to push this package to SA registry and then pull it back. Here, we are avoiding it. We basically create a sidecar, and we injecting into cross-plane cache the X package, and basically you creating the, a nice uh, local setup without external dependencies. Now, uh, configuration is getting installed, and uh, our test flow is waiting for the readiness. So in parallel, in parallel uh, terminal, we can f walk around and uh, look around and see what is happening. So configuration is already installed. That's great. What about providers that are coming as dependency from configuration? So they getting they getting pulled in into the testing cluster, right? And uh, here we have a simple dependency on Azure Network and family Azure as a config provider. So this is upstairs run currently. It waits for provider packages to be healthy, exactly those uh, guys. And uh, yeah, uh, in, a, in a bit, it should be fully ready, and it will proceed with the flow. Uh, I think we can just make like something like watch. Yeah, it's already true, true. And so after provider readiness, it already starts to apply the claim under test. And a claim under test uh, is this X network, X network uh, package here. So just a quick reminder that we are testing this stuff and underlying composition. So everything is getting applied right now in a fully automated manner. I did nothing, right? I just uh, uh, did the read-only operations and we can uh, get a composites, and we can uh, do something like cross-plane beta trace, for example. Uh, and it will show us uh, all the composed resources that are coming from instantiation of the composite resource under test. So as you can see, the resource group is already uh, available, and uh, uh, the rest of uh, of resources uh, waiting the reconciliation. So we can wait a bit. Uh, it will be uh, eventually ready, and then it, the uh, up test will, uh, will proceed and tear the stuff down. So that, that's basically the flow. Uh, as we remember, it's uh, uh, cross-plane runs this uh, reconciliation loop, and uh, it will be a form of eventual consistency. As you can see, virtual network is really ready. Uh, subnet is good. So our change uh, that we did actually looks good end-to-end -end as well. And so uh, after some time, uh, the, all the uh, resources will be provisioned on the cloud provider side, and we should be good. I think we don't have much time to wait for the end of the test flow, so we can proceed with the, uh, with the rest of the slides. So, uh, up test uh, upcoming enhancements. Uh, so, uh, if you follow this area, 
Uh, there is a successor to Cattle, our underlying engine called Chainsaw, and we have a proposal and pull request to update to it, and it will uh, enable us to build more powerful assertions, better logs, and meanwhile keeping the things compatible. Uh, we, Victor, our colleague, and also his uh, DevOps celebrity, he has a nice coverage of a Chainsaw, and uh, watch it, it's linked in the slides. Uh, uh, and he's actually on the conference. He's presenting in a parallel room, so, room, so catch him up for a chat. He's a cool dude. Uh, Triab test. Uh, it's very easy. So, like, uh, it's for, if you take the binary, it's not obvious how to set it up. But if you get, get our reference configuration, it's very easy to test with it, uh, set it up, and after we get the understanding how to run it in our sample repo, it's very easy to transfer to your custom cross-plane configuration. So. Uh, you will be ready to go with your end-to-end -end testing story pretty soon. And if you find any issues, definitely open, open, uh, provide a feedback in a GitHub repo. So, uh, before we recap, I want to see, yeah, uh, full deletion. So, it, so if it reached the delete state, it means that everything was provisioned, right, and it made an update, import, and now it uh, reconciles for the clean deletion. So everything, everything is good with our code. Uh, so we can probably finalize uh, this talk with, uh, with the following thoughts. So uh, our recommendation here, like, you know, rely as much as possible on local testing, local feedback loop, and follow the classic test pyramid uh, recommendation, basically. Invest as much as possible into local uh, uh, level of the testing, which is cheap faster and uh, uh, reliable, meaning like these tests are usually not flaky, and to keep the end-to-end -end layer controlled. So basically, use a local render val validate, apply test-driven development flow, and when you have a good enough signals, pr proceed with end-to-end -end level testing, and you have a test to automate even end-to-end -end level testing stuff. Uh, if you would like to learn more, we have a set of reference platforms available in totally open source manner on GitHub. You can uh, pick, uh, this is just, you know, uh, uh, examples from Big3. We, we have more, uh, but basically you can clone, uh, see the uh, both testing patterns and configuration building best practices that we are using there and reuse it on your site. So it's very easy to adopt. We have a set of recent blog posts. Uh, one is about uh, overall cross-plane configuration building and uh, set up everything up to the arena way how to maintain in the long term. And Steven uh, just uh, yesterday released an amazing uh, blog post on uh, covering this testing pattern local, uh, local validation layer. So that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. Uh, the, all the uh, slides are available on uh, this scheduling. And please submit feedback there. Thank you for joining us today. And we have like uh, five minutes for questions, I guess. Yeah, please. How's uh, Yeah, so it's very uh, kind of classic questions that we're getting uh, very frequently from, co from community. So my usual thinking like a Terraform, it's CLI tool. Like it's great and I see infrastructure as a code layer, but it doesn't provide a control plane, right? It doesn't provide API. Uh, Crossplane extends a Kubernetes API and creates like control plane for you. So you basically can consume uh, resources. You can create your own AWS if you like, like you know, with the custom resources with uh, with a crossplane. So it's kind of next level for me. Yeah. But in what kind of scenario? I mean, I would be preferring crossplane against Terraform. So, well, self self service scenario, right? So you you want to, for example, you want to consume, provide to your developers in an organization. I don't know, yeah. very secure database and very like you know secure S3 bucket or any service. You encapsulate everything with uh, crossplane, and they consume it like as a part part of IDP or part of API, whatever you like. Like where you, it's very integratable, right? Because it's it just the extension of Kubernetes API. It's very powerful. Yeah, it also supports. Mm. Monitoring every resource mm. has Grafana Prometheus metrics. Mm. So across all your clusters, you can monitor in real time what the state is. It continually reconciles, so you don't have to like have a plan disaster. Right. You don't know. So it's really the use case we see are these internal platforms where you're supporting thousands of end users who are requesting things. So you're building your own internal platform. And you benefit from all uh, Kubernetes ecosystem, right? So you you can apply all GitOps practices with Zargo or Flux. So yeah, uh, you can 
build a very reliable platform with it. Any other questions? One minute. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you. Yeah, sorry, like maybe after. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so with Crossplane, my infrastructure is then managed by something that's, that relies on Kubernetes as well. Doesn't that introduce some sort of single point of failure? And how do you mitigate having all your infrastructure managed through a system that is also subject to failures? Yeah, basically, uh, you m manage with cross-plane, right? You have a only a control plane on a cross-plane enabled cluster, right? So like, if, if cross-plane is down, your infrastructure is fine still, right? And if you need to recover, it's kind of etcd backup, and you can even like, you know, restore and re-import the resources on another cluster. So it's actually like lightweight, and the state is controllable, let's say. So you don't have a real, uh, a real failure if cross-plane fails, and it's easy to recover. Thanks. And I think that's it, right? Yeah, thank you so much.